my our ganesh you know he conducted this program you know he sort of delivers a lot of lectures uh, from this very stage he had delivered one particular series of talks uh, titled bharatiya sanskritiya moola tatvagalu in kannada uh, from this dvg hall last year okay uh, i think he had delivered it in in various parts totaling about 33 hours okay Uh, those of you who can follow kannada okay so the dvd is available there i sincerely you know suggest that you essentially get that and you know rather get started with learning and listening to it so we were well, some of us friends you know we were, we were so impressed and inspired by that particular program uh, we went to dr ganesh you know two months ago and we requested him sir we want a similar one for the benefit of those who have not been able to attend your program on a weekday evenings because we know our work schedule it is not always possible to be here at 6:30 because usually the gokula institute programs start at 6:30 and they go on till 8 o'clock in the evening and also uh, those of us who are actually residing outside of karnataka including in the us and other places who have actually been you know uh, fans of dr ganesh and they have also been asking for this particular program to be you know recorded in english okay hence this program when we when i, when I went to his home and requested he was so glad then and there he took a piece of paper and then then he just wrote down a few things okay in fact go essentially sort of you know get started with a flyer and we will do this program in august you know hence you know uh, this program and uh, I, i really want to sort of thank every one of you who have assisted us in terms of getting this message across uh, because we didn't do any advertisement okay we didn't go on social media really and uh, there was no flyer either okay so there was just an email that i that we sent out and the uh, dhatu group sent to uh, their circle and uh, you know many of dr ganesh fans you know they distributed among the raghuvamsha study circle and uh, especially i want to thank uh, spiritual bangalore and also uh, youth for seva volunteers they have a huge uh, you know uh, email distribution list and then you know rather we got uh, uh, this message across on that uh, media as well so you know this program as we communicated already is going to be in six parts right today tomorrow saturday sunday again next saturday sunday 20th and 27th and the week after september 3rd and 4th and uh, i really uh, request and appeal to all of you to be you know present right in time for all the six talks okay uh, with that let me briefly introduce uh, dr ganesh and uh, request him to sort of get started shatavadhani dr r ganesh did his masters in mechanical engineering and sanskrit later he pursued research in material science and metallurgy and also got his dlit in kannada literature for his thesis on the art and science of avadhanam a unique literary feat involving concentration memory spontaneous verification in classical diction and astounding wit aided with a refined sense of humor he is the only shatavadhani in india to have performed this art form in several languages embellished with fine arts dr ganesh has delivered over 900 performances of avadhana both in india and abroad having studied classical liter- literatures of many indian and foreign languages ganesh is acquainted with more than 17 languages he composes in eight languages and has published over 40 books in sanskrit kannada and english covering a wide range of subjects like the poetry poetics prosody aesthetics vedic and vedantic studies dharma shastra and rituals cultural studies fine arts indian thoughts fiction translation and others he has also published more than 250 research papers connected with engineering india studies aesthetics music dance sculpture philosophy criticism values history and other subjects dr ganesh has been invited to deliver talks on various aspects of indian culture and literature to date he has delivered over 8000 such talks and has presented papers under the auspices of many distinguished fora ganesh is well initiated practically in several indian classical indian art forms such as music dance drama painting rangoli and others he is also involved in theatrical activities of traditional importance and especially in the yakshagana form of karnataka and is instrumental in evolving the solo dance form ekavakti yakshagana form of this art form in a classical way as a composer of music and dance numbers dr ganesh has over 6000 items to his credit his contribution to ballet and sanskrit literature have also been noteworthy he is a popular cultural columnist too 
He is the architect of the unique Kalavadhanam form involving Kavya, Chitra, Gita and Ritya and has presented this form of Avadhana over 1000 times in India and abroad. He has made a world record of composing verses extempore continuously for 24 hours in the year 1997. Dr. Ganesh has been honored with many titles and awards including many distinctions from the central and state governments of India. Many academic, cultural, religious institutes of repute have felicitated him and he has been honored with titles both in India and abroad. Many leading newspapers and TV channels have covered his programs and published exclusive extensive interviews. Dr. Ganesh has taught in several engineering colleges regularly and is a visiting faculty in several universities and academic institutions. He has worked as a director of Sanskrit studies at the Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan and was the research officer at the IGNCA, Indira Gandhi National Center of Arts, SRC Bangalore. Presently, he is the Dean for the Department of Values at the Academy for Creative Teaching, Bangalore. Following is only a narrative list of rewards and titles and recognitions presented to Dr. Organesh. Kavya Kanta Award for Best Verif Versification, Rajyotsava Prashasti of Karnataka Government, Outstanding Indian Award, Karnataka State's Dasara Felicitation in for Sanskrit Poetry, Government of India's President's Certificate Merit Award for the Best Young Sanskrit Scholar. This award is also known popularly as Badarayana Vyasa Puraskar and he received the title in 2003. Felicitation and titles by the Sringeri Mat, Kanchi Mat, Udupi Mat and several universities. Kempegod Award by the Brihat Bengaluru Mahanagar Palike. Honorary Delit for unique literary contribution from the Tumkur University and others. Thus, I invite Dr. Ganesh to this program. I invite you all and again, thank you for coming. Uh, I request Dr. Ganesh to get started with the lecture program. Not to be boring you with this. Again, we'll, we'll follow the same pattern for the second half as well. As we requested over email, if you have any questions, please write them down in a piece of paper. I or some volunteer will be around. Please pass it on. That way we will be able to sort of maximize on the time, you know, that we have. Thank you. And, uh, you know, so Dr. Ganesh, please get started. Om Tat Sat. Good morning. It's a very heartening occasion. But at the same time, I have my own diffidence. The reason is very simple and obvious, of course. It's very, very difficult to comprehend a great culture like India. And even to bring in into a nutshell the salient features of it and give a bird's eye view is rather difficult and almost an impossibility. And other thing is, to speak anything on Indian culture in an alien language is a greater difficulty as such. Because uh, we don't have suitable words, at least for me. My basic qualification is Bachelor of Engineering, BE, bad in everything. <laughs> and of course, English is one major thing there. When that being the case, we have uh, our own impediments and difficulties. And the other one is, there is so much of misnomer and misconception and two extremely diverging views are present and they are reigning. When that being the case, how to trod a path which is very close to truth and reality and naturally that will be something like the golden mean. That is the ideal. I don't know whether it will be golden mean or road go rolled golden mean. I don't know. And we know the price of gold is soaring so high and golden mean path is a very costly business and yet we have to attempt for the best. Well, my six days of talk is uh, aiming at giving a broad-based introduction to Indian culture, essentials of Indian culture, rather foundations of Indian culture, basically based on, fundamentally based on the primary sources, not on the secondary sources. Because whenever we speak of Vedas or Upanishads or Sangam literature or Kalidasa or Shilpa Shastra or Nati Shastra or whatever, we often and often refer to secondary sources. Well, I am not against any secondary source. But at the same time, 
you should always be verified from the primary and so my focus is on the primary source and naturally my strong footing is there secondary source is so vast and it's almost humanly impossible for anybody and even for an institution to go through the secondary sources completely and come to a conclusion that's why it's for my own convenience also i am essentially depending on primary sources but at the same time i am not ignorant of the great masters who have written in various languages basing on the primary sources for example a great seer like scholar mahamahopadhyaya bharatratna panduranga vaman kane in his history of dharma shastra volumes or the complete scholar dr v raghavan in his various writings or the giant like scholars vasudev sharan agrawala or the embodiment of knowledge anand kentish kumar swami like that we have very very great people who have gone through the primary sources in depth and they have become an inspiration for me and people like me so i will be going through those works also and keeping them in my mind i will be <laughs> enumerating different aspects of indian culture and of course i'll also be referring to some western scholars honest and verily uh, enriching scholars like uh, dr ak warder or el bhasham or uh, will durant we have many such so it is not uh, just restricted to primary sources but the focus is on primary sources if somebody a person like el bhasham if he says something which is questionable i am here to question him with all my modesty and conviction and commitment to the original sources or even will durant his story of civilization is a fantastic testimony of his knowledge and insight into uh, the history of mankind but at the same time his uh, positive of acquaintance with the primary sources especially in connection with india here and there he has erred and rather blunders committed and of course that time research was also the reason for such limitation so in that cases i am verily here to show the points of differences but uh, that doesn't mean i am brushing aside all his thoughts for uh, an example i have to give the basic foundations of culture and all i'll be taking from him only and even from others like tyne b if i am saying all these things no sentence of mine is uh, not uh, based on any authority every utterance of mine will be based on one or the other authority primary source or secondary source and so you can be very sure damn sure of the authenticity for i am not the authentic person but my sources are very authentic as abhinav gupta one of the greatest champions of medieval indian thought and culture he says tasya me sarvashishyasya nopadesha daridrata me being student to one and all i have no positive and dearth for information and erudition i have desire to say so but uh, my own diffidence pulls me back yet that is the spirit on the other one is what we say ignorant appreciation or ignorant denigration both are very very dangerous we we know too well about that so we have to know with all full awareness as the upanishads quote yadeva gnanena karoti tadeva viryavattaram bhavati that which is done with complete awareness and understanding that can alone that can alone enrich the thing that is viryavattar that will be enriching and uh, that will be fulfilling effect and experience and it is also said yadeva vidyaya karoti tadeva viryavattaram bhavati and also by erudition and uh, acquaintance with the sources and all so we have to know the things and then come to a conclusion whether it is right or wrong as kalidasa says purana mityeva na sadhu sarvam na chapi kavyam navamitya vadyam santa parikshanya tarat bhajante mudha para pratyaneya buddhi just because it is old we can't say it is gold and just because it is new we can't dismiss that aside we need both and anything which is not coming to my experience and which is beyond the purview of my experience beyond the purview of my practice 
I should be all the more careful while making any statement positive or negative on that. I am well aware of that. And any thing, any aspect of knowledge or anything that comes to our mind should be screened and scanned through that total experience and that is called Sarvatrika Nirapeksha Anubhava in the term of Vedanta. Sarvatrika Universal Nirapeksha Absolute in the light of that, everything has to be seen. If not, we will always have the danger of becoming biased and carried away by one or the other opinion. So that much is very, very important. The transparent approach is the hallmark of any pursuit. And here also, I try to stick on to that completely. Then, we have, since uh, two centuries, the influence of the West in a pronounced manner and we have many positive and negative effects also because of that. One such thing is it has reduced our confidence to a great extent. And so in these days, especially in these uh, uh, decades of 8 or 10, we have a lot of diffidence. Either we become too sensitive and uh, uh, hesitant or sometimes we become megalomaniac without us nothing can happen India is the center of whole creation something something like that so this uh, what uh, our great poet laureate Kuvempu used to say Jai Vimarshe, Sai Vimarshe, Bai Vimarshe like that to everything Jaya 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 saying or to everything abusing we should not have that but at the same time, just to be neutral, one should not be sterile also. Many times, honesty and sincerity, they become so unproductive. Criticism should never become contraceptive of creativity. Likewise, we should be justly proud of what our country and our culture achieved. And so again and again, we have to verify our stands. It's a dynamic equilibrium. It's not a static one. We cannot conclude forever. And then happily sleep over the matters. So, one extreme is glorifying everything available in Indian culture. For example, uh, we had electricity, we had television, we had aircrafts, we had everything. But everything we had only when the West invented that. Till Lucy Brown was born as a test tube baby, some way, some, somewhere mid-70s, we never even had in our dreams about test tube baby. But when once that was revealed, all our Pauranikas and Pravachanakaras and Katha Kalakshepakaras, they started saying, all the Kauravas are products of test tube babies and Dronacharya is product of test tube baby, what not. It's unpardonable, hilarious, dubious. So we have to be well-rooted in facts. At the same time, India is of no use. Its language or culture or art or whatever, it is insignificant, as uh, Macaulay used to say. One small shelf of an European library is sufficient to contain all the knowledge of the East. Something like that, he says. And that is, is not an advisable path. We should have something based on complete understanding and that's why Tadvidhi Pranipata in a Pariprasthena Sevaya, Krishna says, Pranipata, submission, complete acceptance and open-mindedness in approach. And then Pariprasthena, inquiry from all sides, Paritaha Prachati, Paritaha Prashna, is Pariprasthena, inquiry from all sides. So thorough examination without losing reverence and respect, that is the approach. And I try to follow that. I don't know to what extent I will be successful in that. But my effort is sincere and honest. That much I can assure. With this preliminary, we can as well go to it. First of all, foundations of Indian culture means we have to analyze the words. What is India? And what is foundation? And what is culture? One need not analyze of... <laughs> But for that, the other three, four words have to be analyzed. Foundations, of course, we know. Essentials, basis. 
on which thought on which philosophy on which practical philosophy the whole system is based that is foundation foundation is not a canopy it is not a kalasha an edifice which is standing above all it is beneath it is the support though not seen it is everywhere felt it's something like we are at the bottom of an ocean of air yet we are not aware of that we breathe but we are not aware of it it is our sustenance yet we are not aware foundation is something like that it will not be seen it will not be comprehended but it will always be experienced without our knowledge we are into it and that is foundation and when foundation has to be revealed means the whole building may be in danger the whole building may be subjected to danger yet we have to see for that we should have careful way of approach how we have to deduce the foundations of indian culture i shall go to it later but foundation as we know it is the essence on which the whole structure stands and that should be very sturdy very strong and so these should be evaluated at the level of universal experience no partial experience why i am saying that in the name of spirituality so much of mysticism is advocated and that has corroded our culture like anything individual experiences individual whims and fancies they have been graduated or blown up to the level of universal philosophy ending up in idolatry and worshiping false gods that should not happen for that we have to focus on universal experience and spirituality is truly scientific in the nature of inquiry yes capital so foundations have to be essentially based on the facts and values the facts should be fundamental and values should be universal then indian of course in english we have the term india but not in indian languages it is the name given by the others given by the outsiders and generally names are given by the outsiders we will not be having any names only when we have the multitude of a single entity similar entities then we have to have some distinction then we'll be going for names if one person whether john or rama or krishna is only one person in that village no other person by the same name will not be having any prefix or suffix is just rama or john or krishna or whatsoever but if there are four krishnas then he is the short krishna and he is the fatty krishna and he is the dark krishna something something like that will be having attributes prefixes and suffixes so india never come across any culture in its formative period and hence it never found the necessary necessity for naming that's why it was never called by any name we don't have any name even in our text sanatana dharma is also not seen in the vedas or in the upanishads it's only in the later texts we have that to describe the nature of dharma it is sanatana sanatana means eternal we don't know when it started so sanatana dharma is the name of indian culture and bharata was named after a person a group of people like that but uh, we called that by ourselves it's because of one person bharata sarvadamala bharata or he is also known as shakuntala shakuntala asan dushyanta asan of course daushyanti and he ruled the whole country and that's why it is called as bharata in the vedas we have that reference but we don't have any specific uh, uh, name like sanatana dharma or hindu dharma something something like that in any of the basic texts of indian culture but we have the lands name bharata bharata varsha bharata khanda like that the the name has beautiful connotations bharata means who bears bibhrati iti bharata ki who bears sustenance is the very essential feature of indian culture or for that matter any culture and that basic nature of culture is brought out in our tradition 
and there we have the unique feature then it also means bharata the derivative of bharata bhayam kantyam rataha bharata those who are interested those who are desirous of light and delight they are called bharatas the letter bha has 32 meanings and few such meanings are happiness light enjoyment awareness and what not and it also means the sage bharata of natya shastra who gave the great text of aesthetics fine arts and many more and it also means bharata or the jada bharata was a great seer who gave the eternal spirituality and whose uh, beautiful anecdotes are given in bhagavata purana and even in the vishnu purana like that we have three important personalities behind the name bharata one is the king bharata the other is the rishi bharata who is the author of natya shastra and the other is the saint bharata embodiment of spirituality what it means we need order order is in bharata shakuntala and we need entertainment and enrichment of culture that is in bharata muni and we need absolute liberation and bliss of the highest order and there we have jada bharata so these three figures they personify the spirit of indian culture and of course we have many other bharatas too according to the jain tradition we have the bharata chakravarti son of the adinatha or adideva vrishabhanatha tirthankara and again in the maha bhagavata purana we have references to vrishabhadeva so i will be coming to jainism and buddhism later in the uh, coming lectures there i'll be showing how they are no way different in spirit to sanatana dharma they are one and the same in spirit then i'll be showing the oneness of the basis there now coming back to the topic of discussion bharata we have a country named after a group of people bharatas bharatas were the people who were residing on the banks of parushni and vipasha vipasha is bias parushni is ravi in the vedic times the seven rivers sapta sindhus as they were called now they have been reduced to five punjab pancha apaha punjab vipasha vitasta parushni asikni shutadru sindhu and then saraswati vipasha is bias vitasta is jhelam and then uh, parushni is ravi and then uh, satlej is shutadru sindhu of course it is there and then asikni jinab then saraswati now dried up unfortunately it is now being revived and we have near day future near in the near future itself we will be having a day where saraswati will be flowing completely now it's only a, a rainy season river gagar well on the banks of uh, parushni and vipasha one group of people they stayed they are called bharatas and they are one among the groups of the five clans who were in the vedic period yadus druhyus purus anus and turvashas and bharatas are the descendants of purus and later the whole country got that name i am not going to the details of history as well but just what i am saying some people they developed this country and they are the ancestors of our culture and it is indigenous it's no way foreign but at the same time we have the spirit also here i am simultaneously dwelling on two planes one is the physical plane the other one is the spiritual plane i am saying a clan of people a sub clan called bharatas who are the descendants of purus and who are one among the five basic clans of ancient india this is all physical reality and then the three great personalities bharata chakravarti bharata muni and bharata rishi and the other one is bharata is the name of sustenance bibhrati iti bharata bhr dhatu that is the root and the other one is of course bharata bharatasya bhavah bharatam 
means that which is interested in light delight and other things and also that belongs to bharatas the very meaning of dharma is sustenance support in no way these two words are different in spirit bharata or bharata and dharma they are one and the same because dhr dharana dharma ityahu that is the dhatu of dharma dharma has come from the root dhr dhatu dharana dharma ityahu that which supports and bharata is also from the bhr the dhatu bibhrati means to support in that sense india just at the spiritual level it is the notion it is the concept that has the power to sustain in that way india can be realized at any place at any time it is not just restricted to the geographical territories and the boundaries it is beyond that it is a spiritual space it transcends space and time and in that way anybody at any time can be indians so local and global what a popular phrase now it can be said spiritual and physical simultaneously the combination of flesh and spirit body and mind or whatever we call adi bhuta and adhyatma they have to go together if not no civilization no culture no country no race can survive and no workable model for the betterment of the world can be thought of in that sense our tradition has a beautiful way of looking at the things at two levels simultaneously as we have in vedanta the vyavaharika satta and paramarthika satta the workable model of reality and the enjoyable model of absolute ideality at both the levels they work and bharata dharma they are in that way synonymous in spirit though dharma has no specific synonym like bharata i am only proving from the view point of etymology etymology has its own space, place in the realm of knowledge and knowledge representation and the other beauty is any entity at the physical level has to change according to space and time to make it useful to make it meaningful it has to be elevated to the level of spirituality but at the same time any aspect of spirituality if it has to come down to the level of utility it has to become physical the inevitability is always there one has to rise and one has to come down we have to rise ourselves to become teachers when we want to teach we have to come down to the level of students both are there we have to collect water in the sump and then pump it to the overhead tank and then again bring down to the different taps this should always happen it is something like the cloud formation the water has to be heated in the oceans and then it has to be vaporized and taken to the heights and there the clouds have to form and then the rains have to shower down the saline water the impure water the polluted water has to be vaporized and the distilled water has to come down and this is the beauty in sublimation when we rise we rise leaving back our tiny petty thoughts that's how pure water is collected it is something like the distillation and what we have to give the best of ours has to be given not the impure water it's only the purest of pure water has to be given in the process of elevation that happens at the level of physicality we always have pollution we always have shortcomings and we always have such differences and meanness that has to happen that's the loka dharma that is niyati that's the order but to keep the order in its best possible manner we again and again have to tune to the highest spirituality and that's why we are very fond of giving spiritual meaning to any physical entity and we should not stop by that we should try to materialize any spirituality to the level of reality if one dominates over the other and if it if one is treading faster and faster moving in a faster pace and leaving back the other then there is imbalance then we have discrepancy this should not happen in our great classics 
ಲೈಕ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಇನ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ಯಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಇನ್ ಕಲಾಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರ್ ಅರ್ಥಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಇನ್ ದಿ ರೆಲ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೌಟಿಲ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಧರ್ಮಸೂತ್ರಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೌತಮ ಅಪಸ್ತಂಭ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅರೈವ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಭರತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಭಾರತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಾವಿನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ರಿವರ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ ಸಿಂಧು ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಬೈ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಷಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪರ್ಷಿಯನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ದಿ ಅವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಸಕಾರ ದಿ ಅಟರೆನ್ಸ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಹ ಸೊ ಸಿಂಧು ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೀಕ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹಕಾರ ದಿ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಹ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರೀಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಆರ್ ಇ ದೇರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಈಟಾ ನಾಟ್ ಹೀಟಾ ಎಪ್ಸಲಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹೆಪ್ಸಲಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರೀಕ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಹಿಂದೂ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಇಂದೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಅಟರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ದಂತ್ಯ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ತಾಲವ್ಯ ಡ ಸೊ ಇಂಡಿ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ವಿ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಐ ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿಂಗ್ವಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಿಂಧು ವಾಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಟುಡೆ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಓಪನ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ನಲಿ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ದೆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯುಲಾರಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ನೇಮ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಭಾರತ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಡೂ ದ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವೈ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ನೇಮ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಸಿಲೋನ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾ ವೈ ಕಾಂಟ್ ವಿ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಈವನ್ ನೀಡ್ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಚ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆಲ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಕೆಲ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರೀಕ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಸ್ಯೂಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಓರಿಯೆಂಟೆಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಓರಿಯೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ರಿಫೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ಲಿಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ರಿಫೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಜೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಕೌಂಟರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜ್ ದೆನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರೀಡಮ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ 
but one has to share food is not told by civilization it is only product of culture from nomadic life man became agriculturist and had settlements and that agriculturist produced grains he cooked and had his food so the story of civilization goes but story of culture should not end up there there i have to remember the vedas in the vedas the second one the yajur veda has the, in the central portion literally its central portion and spiritually its core that is the rudra adhyaya in the fourth kanda there one line goes like this sagdhischame sapitischame oh god give me a fellow eater and fellow drinker to share my food to share my drinks i need a friend this is not product of civilization this is product of culture and this is uh, rather very unique to indians i feel many times though i don't have much personal experience I have read here and there and found out from my friends in the western countries mostly our people go there and we are always paschima mukhis not purva mukhis something like matters compass which always points to north we are always towards the west there they don't have the business of buy to coffee <laughs> our few friends going to a cafeteria and one person paying the bill today and some other will be paying tomorrow we have their own problems here also yet what i mean is the spirit of sharing is so innate and so natural an instinct even day before yesterday i was talking to dr s l bhairappa over phone he was saying in gujarat and dal we see even strangers in the train and dal they share food i had many times such experience when i was traveling delhi kota ujjain and other places कुछ खाना नहीं खाते हैं क्या महाराज क्या चाहते हैं लाइक दैट जस्ट बे लुकिंग एट माई फेस आई एम ए स्ट्रेंजर टू देम नो डेज इट इज लेसनिंग ड्यू टू सो मेनी रीजन एंड वन सच रीजन इज वी डोंट ट्रस्ट पीपल सिविलाइजेशन बाई प्रोडक्ट रादर साइड इफेक्ट आई शुड कॉल इज डिस्ट्रस्ट एंड डिसबिलीफ सो दट सो कल्चर इज समथिंग not essentially connected with civilization but without that civilization will have no fulfillment and we have many such examples we can um, we can as well enumerate that we need so many things uh, we need so many features there for example language may be the product of civilization but poetry is the product of culture so everywhere when we have something which is non utilitarian i should call it as meta utilitarian there comes the dimension of culture and here we are focusing to the meta utilitarian things they are intangible for example a housewife when somebody asks what are you doing are you working no i am not working is she not working her contribution is not recognized in terms of money but her contribution is immense it's not at all possible for anybody to evaluate in terms of money no dollar no euro nothing nothing will come to evaluate her contribution nowadays we are saying house making something something but uh, they are all clumsy clumsy ways of expressions i honestly feel grihini grahaswamini yantri radasi yamani like that atharveda says she is the driving force of family so that much of confidence has to be developed so this is the product of culture the intangible source of human life and society that is born more and to just take another example of art fine art abhinaya dance anything quantified is coming under the realm of culture and anything qualified will go to the realm of uh, uh, anything quantified will go to the realm of civilization and anything qualified goes to the realm of culture uh, tears have to be shown means we have the hamsasya hasta two hamsasya hastas in both hands they are shown they are brought to the eyes and then the 
drops of tears trickling from the eyes they are suggested with the shaky hands they are called the hasta rechakas or anguli rechakas like that then it is that or take suchi hasta that is the index finger shown and then on the cheeks that is mood so that the tears are swept and wiped that itself is the communication at the physical level angika abhinaya and that is civilization but shedding tears that is satvik abhinaya that cannot be taught by any dance teacher this is hamsastya this is suchi and then taking the hands of the beloved in alapallava hasta and then wiping off the tears all that is only imitation not any living shedding tears is realization and that is culture means the very purpose is that why we are showing to bring the effect of crying shedding tears and that has been brought then and there itself so in that sense culture is the fulfillment of civilization but unfortunately many times many civilizations or at least few civilizations they will be so intolerant to other cultures they try to wipe off they try to massacre they are predator civilizations when that is happening many cultures will lose their existence and the irony is this when once the body is ignored when the spirit is pursued naturally body withers out then the spirit has to take up some other body whether it is punarjanma or avatara i don't know we have two differences subtle differences between these two words punarjanma is to a person who has karma according to our convention avatara is not the product of karma it is the product of leela the god takes avataras god comes down as an avatarin and humans they take up the janmas <laughs> janma is an inevitable thing but avatara is not it's not a compelling one avatara is after one's own ichcha and ichcha is means one's own desire according to one's own whims and fancies leela it is sport i need not do anything yet i do as krishna says but janma is not it is very very compelling so when a culture is dying because of the onslaught of some predator civilizations what it means a culture has to take up some other shape if not it will not live means it has to gain a body it has to gain a new body young and energetic fully enriching and trying to fight against the onslaught of that that should happen many times india has taken newer and newer bodies also but while taking that sometimes our ancestors have delayed and so much harm has happened much of the harm has gone into it well we have to take avatara means i'm complete and so i'm taking another rebirth on my own accord and that is incarnation and i'm fighting against the evil like that but anyhow the need of body should never be forgotten so the reality should never be forgotten while dealing with culture this harmony has to be always maintained the balance between flesh and blood flesh and spirit has to be maintained which i said earlier so we have to take care of that many times what has happened with our mats swami ji's and self styled guru ji's instantly guru ji is rather a vulgar word at least for today's these days businesses are concerned because it is the most corrupt word nowadays it is the most misused word and uh, one has to denigrate a person with any sort of abuse as means he has to be called as guru guruji <laughs> guruji is much more dangerous guruji swami ji and all they are most filthy terms nowadays so if you want to respect a person don't call him as guru and guruji so now these people such self styled swami ji is guru ji is and other people they have focused more and more on spirit and conveniently they have ignored the body the civilization the structure and that's why what has happened so many beautiful things of ours are lost without a structure we can't have a substance 
we can think of it but we can't have it so both are essential that's why the champions of culture should not denigrate civilization and vice versa but at the same time the purpose of body is meant for our spirit that we should never ignore but the irony is when we become stronger and stronger at the physical level we forget the spiritual purpose itself yagnyavalkya smriti beautifully says ayam hi paramo dharma yad yogena atma darshanam the highest dharma the highest duty the highest righteousness is nothing but self realization for that we have everything taking an example of poetry the very purpose of meter grammar alliteration figures of speech whatever it is all meant for subserving the ultimate experience rasa but without that there is no use of this at the same time rasa is not possible to produce in vacuum nothing can be materialized in vacuum this we should always understand and in our tradition we again and again we see the pitfalls in the dichotomy between these two and also sometimes spirituality is ignored and sometimes materialism is uh, is uh, seriously ignored and these things have brought down our lives and many many generations have suffered and even now the same suffering is going on in different magnitudes and in different directions so all these things have to be taken care of while we discussing culture and true knowledge true pursuit of one's own self is against nobody and nothing that we should understand but at the same time if somebody is against my selfless harmless pursuit i should take to task i should take them to task this beautiful management has to be realized and that is yoga yoga is not just shutting the nose and then doing kumbhaka or body gyrations in myriad forms it's only one aspect of yoga i am not denigrating even that yoga is samatva yujir yoga means yujir yoga that is the dhatu roopa combination of divergent things into a synthesized way into a harmonized way vichitra bhava dharmamsha tattva prakhyacha darshanam what bhatta tota says the things which are falling apart in myriad manners completely diverging and often conflicting in nature trying to find out a rationalizing force synthesizing force behind that and forging that well and that is called darshana spiritual revelation and that should be universal in nature and hence we need the combination of flesh and blood and fortunately sanatana dharmas foundations the vedas never ignored the spirit brahma and kshatra the spirit and the body as we call they should always be together yatra brahma cha kshatram cha sanyanchau savratau that's how shukla yajurveda says brahma and kshatra should always go together hand in hand and that's why we see in our tradition every god or goddess will be having many arms many weapons and a pious face and some musical instruments and a tranquil posture all that will be there a tapasvi like shiva why should carry shula in his hand not just shula trishula trident and a happily sleeping person like mahavishnu why should have gada and chakra in his hands and a very very pious deity la goddess of learning like saraswati she should carry so many weapons unfortunately nowadays our education like our education which has become spineless even saraswati is made spineless by having only two arms tug to veena one to book and one to the rosary but maha saraswati is not like maha saraswati has eight arms starting from the plow to the pounding club hala and musala the representation of agriculture the beginning of agriculture is in plow and the conclusion of agriculture is in pounding the corns that is in hala and also shankha and chakra and also bhiksha patra i am ready to accept from any corner whatever good comes to me and gada i am ready to hit at anybody's head if they avoid the cosmic order and if they violate the norms of cosmic order 
like that all these weapons and what that indicates the same spirit of brahma and kshatra everywhere we see that in our tradition and that has to be revitalized and revisited then we have the other aspect that is in uh, civilization and culture civilization is essentially territory oriented but culture is not and that's why we can only spread indian culture or american culture or chinese culture and not american civilization chinese civilization and other things but we can create we can harbor a culture at a particular civilization but we can also take it beyond the frontiers in that sense civilization though it is materially stronger it cannot transcend its barriers one has once it has to transcend it it has to become culture in that sense civilization has its limitations culture has no such limitations it is spirit see water cannot rise up it finds its level only it goes down but vapors of water steam can rise to any height it means culture is something like steam and civilization is like water it finds its level we need water without steam we can live but without water we cannot live but for the higher purpose of motivation movement and other things we need steam like that the inseparability of this the paravidya and aparavidya as the upanishad mundaka says paravidya is the spiritual pursuit and aparavidya is the material one both are very very essential but one has to subserve the other we should never forget that brahma is the ultimate and kshatra is the subservient but at the same time the importance of kshatra is so much that even brahma accepts it as its authority that's why great seers like vasishta vishwamitra yagyavalkya vamadeva and others they respected kings like rama janaka dasharatha and many more so mutual respect is very very important now coming back to the physicality of indian subcontinent again the word subcontinent is under question should we call subcontinent it is uh, the creation of the western mind india was never a united force and that's why they called it not as a nation as a continent subcontinent something like that however as mahamahopadhyaya p v kane himself says at the fag end of his mighty work history of dharma shastra india was never a politically united one barring few occasions like the rule of ashoka or the rule of akbar or sometimes during the gupta period like that barring few such instances some 50 or 60 years at the most remaining period many provinces were there many kings were there many empires were there like that in spite of political divergence and multitude of provinces we had the spirit and feel of one nation that is seen in the veda also rashtra so that has happened not because of civilization because of culture india is india in spite of its political multi political divergence because of the cultural unity and that being the case how to say that uh, india was not a country india is not a nation we have to say it's a nation but it may not be in the sense of the west in the western world it nation has some other meaning we have something like space land country state nation like that five different terms are used space is anything where events occur not essentially on earth even in outer space also it can happen even on mars or moon then we have land land is essentially connected with earth then land when it is habited with people and when they have some way of living and life then it is called country and when they have rules and regulations they become state and when they have a cultural identity then they become nation so this is the hierarchy in which it goes india 
may not be state but it was and is a nation and there's more significant yeah. 